Hey everyone, in this one, let's talk about how we can quickly stand up a custom API and use it to interact with a DB. Let's jump right in. Getting started, a good solution for quickly standing up a custom API is we can use an HTTP trigger on wayscript.com. What this does is give us an endpoint that we can reference and send information to or get information from. So we'll use this as an API and we're also able to password protect it. What we can do here is if we want to send information, we can do that with either a body, a post body, or we can use query parameters. In this tutorial, I'll use query parameters. So I'll turn this request on and that will give me the information of those parameters whenever someone goes to this URL. If we turn this on, we've already stood up our custom API. So now I want to show you this. We'll copy that link. We'll open a new tab. And what we'll do is we'll add a query parameter of type and we'll set this equal to A. We don't get a response because we're not specifying anything in our HTTP response. But now if we go down here and sync our step, we see that we have that query parameter over here in the bottom right that says type A. And this feature is what we'll use to interact with a DB. So let's say we have two functions. We want to insert information in one of them and then we'll create a second endpoint to where we can get information. So now what that means is we'll need two different endpoints. We can get that with a second HTTP trigger. You see this one has this get info trailing URL that we'll send our request to. We'll turn this one on and we'll need a response. Our response on this one will be JSON information. So we can choose JSON and we'll come back at the end once we have our information to query and fill in this blank. So going back to our insert information, what we want to do here is to create a connection to a DB. In this example, I'll use a Python DB called TinyDB, but you can use SQL or whatever you want using that specific module. So SQL, you would use an SQL module, but just because I want to show you the code, I'm going to use Python. Pulling in a Python step, you see in the editor gives me this requirements.txt. Here, I'll make sure to include tinyDB because this is the requirement that I need for this database. So now we'll go into our Python code here. And what we'll do is we'll say from tinyDB, we'll do our import. So tinyDB and query. What we want now is to create a database file. And we can do that by clicking these dots over here and selecting new file. I'll call mine db.json and I'll make sure I put the letters in the correct order. There we go. So we have our db.json file created over here to the left. And what we'll do is we'll say our database equal to that tiny db import and we need to specify the file name. Mine is db.json. Once we have that, since this function is for inserting information into our db.json file, what we'll do is pull that information out of this request. So for our example, Let's say that we want to insert a type and then let's do one more, something like an amount. To get those out, what we'll do is we'll say query type and this will just be equal to variables. And what this is, is just a dictionary that references all of the variables within this flow. So any variable that we have access to over here, we can reference it using this dictionary. So ours is a struct of request, so we'll put that in. And then inside that variable, we'll need to get our query params. Then let's get type. So we're going through and getting the key of query params and then type inside this Python struct. Now let's do one more. So if we're, so if we want an amount, we'll say query amount and all we'll do is change this type to amount. Perfect. So the way tinyDB works is we can just say db.insert and this will be a struct where we have type is equal to our variable of query type and then query amount, which we'll call amount is equal to that Python variable of query amount. Awesome. Now that we have this, we have an API set up to where we can insert information into this DB file. So let's test that out. 
we'll go to this URL by copying it. And what we'll do is we have that type of A already here. Now we'll say and amount and we'll just say something like 100. We're still not giving a response on this and we can fix that if we want to. But once it finishes going to that URL, we should now have information in that db.json file to the left, which we do. If you want to make a nicer response instead of just a blank page, what you can do is choose your response here. Now that we have our inserting info API set up right here, let's work on this get info one. We're using Python, so I'll pull that module in. We'll need the same imports. So I'll copy this from right here and paste it. We'll say something like query type will be equal to this line right here. These are different URL endpoints, so we're not working with the same information. We'll copy this code where we declare our DB. The way TinyDB works is we'll set a variable equal to query. Then we'll say something like output will be equal to db.search. Then we'll use that query variable. We'll access a key by using a period and we'll say type is equal to the variable that we create here, which is query type. This is just specific to TinyDB, but our expected output here will be a list of all matching entries inside of a struct. If we just want our first one, what we can do is say variables output. And what this bit right here does is create a variable that we can pass on to the next step in our WayScript program. So we're adding that here. Then we can say output and index it at the first position. This will give us a dictionary that we can pass on. Perfect. So now at this point, let's go ahead and we'll copy this URL, pasting it here. And let's say and type declaring a query parameter equals A. Once we do that, if we go down to our bottom step, and sync, we now see that we can interact with this information here. So we have that type A, and if we run our Python code, now with this information, we should get that output variable we see that we do. So now that we have this output as a struct, all we need to do in this HTTP response is just choose that option to send it back, which we can do right here. Now we'll go and refresh this page. This time we should get some information back, which we see that we do, as a JSON response. So we have a simple API set up where everything is powered by these two functions and we can add more and more functions if we want to. So we have a way where we can insert information and also get that information back. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let us know and we'll help you out. Until next time.